Hey everyone, my name is Vinerin, and in this video we're going to continue with the CryptoGPT project. We're going to build some simple Streamlit UI in order to get some tweets for a specific authors. So we're going to use the form, then we're going to display a list of the authors, and then we're going to display a data frame that contains the tweet themselves. Let's get started. If you prefer to follow along, there is a complete tutorial that is available for ML Expert Pro subscribers and it's called CryptoGPT, Crypto Twitter Sentiment Analysis. Here you can find the complete source code along with the project structure, the dependencies, and then how you can set up your VS code along with all of the code that is available for this tutorial. So please join ML Expert Pro and get access to this and all of the other tutorials that are available for ML Expert Pro subscribers. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to build the first part of the Streamlit application. And specifically, we're going to get this OpenAI key input along with the Twitter accounts. And here, if you recall, you can enter a Twitter handle and then this will go ahead and add the Twitter accounts or the tweets from this account. It will be populated right within this data frame. And in the next part, we're going to do the sentiment analysis along with this one. I have the source code from the last video. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to import Streamlit right here. Then I'm going to configure the web page, which is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to specify after all of these that, and I'm going to go ahead and remove this part right here except for the Twitter client, so we're going to use this. But in order to configure the page, I'm going to call set page config. And here I'm going to say that I want a layout that is white and I want a page title to be crypto GPT. And then this is it for this. And then I'm going to set a title which is going to be just CryptoGPT. And in order to run this, I'm going to open a new terminal here. And I'm going to clear this and run Streamlit on the main.py. So after running the Streamlit app, I just moved everything in a split screen mode. And you can also install Watchdog if you prefer to for Streamlit to run a bit faster. So if you're on a Mac OS, you might do pip install Watchdog. But before that, you need to install the Xcode utilities for the Mac. So, all right, we have this UI. And the first thing that I'm going to do right now is to create two columns, which are going to be the split between the screens. And to do that, I'm going to call st.columns and here I'm going to specify that I want two columns. I'm going to take the first and the second one and I'm going to move this client, let's say for now right here, since we are not using it. Okay, so I want this always to be rerun. So this will go ahead and do that for us but nothing is happening since these columns are not being used at the moment. So in order to use them, I'm going to say with column one, I'm going to first start by creating an input for the OpenAI key. And I'm going to say st.text input. And here I'm going to specify that I want the input to be OpenAI API key. And I want this to be stored into a session state variable. But first, I'm going to specify actually the type to be a password. Let's run this. And this is the input that you're getting. And this is the help. So other than that, I want to specify the key. Yeah, and this will store the key within a ST session state. So yeah, I'm going to show you what this means in a bit. And I'm going to specify a placeholder. And this is going to be SK. Most of the keys start with that, something like that. Okay. 
So let me just change the flake 8 to let's say 100 characters. That didn't do much, but yeah. And then after the placeholder, I want to specify a help field. Get your API key. And then I'm going to paste in the URL. And the URL is going to be platform. Dot OpenAI account API keys. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so this is the result. And you can see that this is the help that we're getting along with the link right here. And you can click it. Also, you can have look at the key. Yeah, strong password right here are suggested by Google, but that's not what we are going to do. So this is the first part. And once you have this session state key, I'm going to just do the following. Since we're adding this to the session state, I want to do a check. Let's say right here. If not, and if we don't have any tweets or any thing in that session, in that session state, I'm going to say st session state tweets equal to an empty list. And then I'm going to stay the session state an API key to be an empty string. So let me just print for you the ST session state API key. Yeah. And you can see that currently the, the key is empty. And if I input something, let's say 42, 42, 42, you can clearly see that this is now within this session state. So instead of just printing this, I'm going to import the OS or operating system part of the module of the Python ecosystem. And right here, I'm going to specify OS dot a new environment variable, which is going to be OpenAI API key. And then we're going to specify the key that we have inputted within here. So this part should now work perfectly. And if we want to do requests with the OpenAI API, we are going to actually use this key that the user has provided right here. So this is the first part. And the next part is to create a form that is going to take a Twitter handle. And to do that for the user, that we want to analyze the sentiment. So to do that, I'm going to specify a form and I'm going to specify a key of the form. And I'm going to call it Twitter handle form. And I want this to be clear on submit. And this again using a context within Python. And the first thing that I want to do is to add a subheader to say at Twitter account. Let's run this. And it says that we are missing a submit button. That's all right. So let's add the submit button. Form submit button. And for the label, I want this to be Add tweets and then on click. I want this to be on at alter. And I'm going to specify this function here. For now, I'm not going to do anything with it. Okay, so we have the button as you can see on the right. And we want to also, if you hover over here, you see that we have this anchor, which is actually not needed here. And I'm going to remove it. 
you can see now we don't have an any acre. So after the subheader is done, I want to have the input itself, which is going to take the Twitter handle of the author. So I'm going to specify Twitter handle and then the key is going to be Twitter handle as well. And for placeholder, I'm going to say I want just Michael Saver. All right, so yeah, if I do this, let's let's just input something and just print it in here. So print st session state Twitter handle, and I'm going to initialize the st session state Twitter handle to an empty string as well. So this should pretty much give us the initial part. Yeah, but I actually don't need to do this because this is going to initialize it for us and it will be initialized only when the form is submitted. So let's run this and let's say uh, Elon Musk, for example. And you can see that now this is printed right here. So we are getting the data from the session and you can see that the form has actually been cleared up. So the Twitter handle was removed, which is great. So the final part of this particular column is going to be, or yeah, is going to be the list of the Twitter handles and then the tweets themselves. But before that, let's handle the adding of the Twitter user. So here I'm going to take just this handle and I'm going to first check if the Twitter handle, I'm not going to do any like empty checks etc. First I'm going to check if the Twitter handle contains at sign and if it does I'm going to remove it. Then if the Twitter handle is in ST session state Twitter handles. So if it was previously added, I'm going to return and I want to initialize this as an empty array of Twitter handles right here. Okay, so if this is done, we're going to return and then I want to use the client that we got to get the tweets and if the length of the tweets is zero so if it is empty I'm going to again return and if it is not I want to populate the Twitter handles but I want actually the Twitter handles to be a dictionary and I'll show you why I'm going to store a dictionary that is using the Twitter handle as a key and then for the value I'm going to add the Twitter username so we'll have the display name of the user as well. And I'm going to show you why we need this and this is going to be the actually the first tweet for example and for it I can take the author name so this will get the author name from here and then in the next I want to add all of the tweets for the tweets so we're going to build a list of all of the available tweets from all of the authors and then this is going to be adding of the author and if you run this right now nothing will happen since we don't actually display any of this but in order to display those, for example, the list of the Twitter users, I want to check right here again with this, the first column. If we have Twitter handles, I want to specify a subheader of Twitter, let's say Twitter accounts, that's reasonable. 
So it says that have we yeah let me let me actually refresh this. Yeah that's that should be alright. So if we have Twitter handles I want to just just list them and I'm going to iterate over those. over the dictionary of this and for the dictionary I want to add the add sign to the handle and then I want to use markdown in order to show the list uh, this will be the name and then after the name I want to specify yeah, this should be a bit complicated. I want to specify a link and within the link is going to be the handle itself and then twitter.com handle. Yeah, that's correct. That seems correct to me. Yeah. So let's try this and at Michael Saver, for example. Yeah. But instead of handle right here, I want this to be actually a handle. Yeah. Okay, so we have the display name of the user and then the handle along with a link to Twitter, which appears to be working. Okay, great. And the final part is the tweets themselves. So once we got those, I can specify a subheader called tweets and initially this is going to be just an empty data frame but in order to display some data I'm going to call streamlit.dataframe and I'm going to create a data frame from the tweets and yeah since we've already created the code for creating a data frame from tweets you can see that we are actually having this data frame that is completely created for free using the code that we've already created and one of the cool things of streamlit is that you can use this button in order to have a full view or a full screen view of the data frame and you can have a look at the tweets that we've fetched at least for michael saver all right, so let's try with another user and see if everything is added correctly. So Richard Hart win, for example. You can see that we have the list and let's check the data frame. Yeah, it appears that we have the Michael Saver tweets and then a lot of tweets from Richard Hart as well. So this appears to be working. In this video we've seen how you can use Streamlit in order to build a part of the sentiment analyzer application. We've seen how you can add Twitter handles, how you can process the tweets and show a list of the authors along with the data frame that displays the tweets themselves. In the next video we're going to continue with the sentiment analysis itself. We're going to use Langchain and ChatGPT to do that. So stay tuned for that please like, share and subscribe. Also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down in the description below. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.